Welcome to the Folktale Project, this is Dan Schultz. Today we're heading back to Legends of the Rhine once again for a story of Knights Templar, and one that shows that, well, the relationship between the Knights Templar and the Church was not always quite so rosy. This is the Templars of Larnac. On the opposite side of the Rhine from Koblenz and towering above Lahnstein rises Castle Larnack, a keep shaped somewhat in the form of a pentagon. Larnack succumbed to the hordes of Louis VIII in the same year that the castle of Heidelberg was destroyed. The following stirring tale is associated with Larnack. It was the Templars of Jerusalem who erected this fortress whose imposing watchtower rises nearly 100 feet above the main building. The riches of the Templars led to their destruction. The contemptible French king, Philip the Fair, by making grave complaints to the Pope, obtained an order for the abolition of this much-abused order and dragged the Grand Master with fifty of his faithful followers to the stake. Everywhere, a cruel policy of extermination was immediately adopted against the outlawed knights, the chief motive of the persecutors being rather a desire to confiscate the rich possessions of the Templars than any religious zeal against heretics and sinners. Peter von Aspelt, Archbishop of Mainz, had cast envious eyes on proud Larnack, which sheltered twelve knights Templar and their retainers. Alleging some faulty conduct on the part of the soldiers of the cross, he gave orders that the castle should be razed, and that the knights should exchange the white mantle with the red cross for the monk's cowl. But to this, the twelve, as knights sans peur et sans approche, issued a stout defiance. This excited the greed and rage of the archbishop all the more. From the pontiff, with whom his own hands he had successfully nursed on his sickbed in Avignon, Peter von Aspelt procured full power over the goods and lives of the excommunicated knights of Larnac. He then proceeded down the Rhine with many vassals and mercenaries and presented the Pope's letter to the Templars, at the same time commanding them to yield. Otherwise, their castle would be taken by storm and the inmates as impenitent sinners would die a shameful death on the gallows. The oldest of the twelve, a man with silvery hair advanced and declared in the name of his brethren that they were resolved to fight to the last drop of their blood and further, that they were quite prepared to suffer like their brethren in France. And so the fight between such fearful odds began. Many soldiers of the electorate fell under the swords of the knights and their faithful servants, but ever the furious archbishop ordered forward new bands to fill the gaps. Day by day the ranks of the defenders became thinner. Prominent everywhere in this hand-to-hand struggle were the heroic forms of the twelve Templars, in white mantle with blood-red cross. At last, at a breach which had been defended with leonine courage, one of the noble twelve sank beneath his shattered shield and closed his eyes in death. A second shared his fate, and then a third. The others, bleeding from many wounds and aided by the sorely diminished remnant of their retainers, redoubled their brave efforts, but still death made havoc in their ranks. When, on the evening of the day of fiercest onslaught, the victorious besiegers planted their banner on the captured battlement, the silver-haired veteran, the former spokesman, stood with blood-flecked sword among the bodies of his fallen comrades, the last survivor. Touched by such noble heroism, the archbishop informed him that he would be allowed to surrender, but, Calling down the curse of heaven on worldly churchmen and their greed of land, he raised on high his sword and rushed upon his foes. Pierced with many wounds, the last of the twelve sank to the earth, and over the corpse of this noble man the soldiers of Mainz pressed into the fortress itself. Peter von Aspelt preserved Larnack as a place of defense and residence for an officer of the electorate of Mainz, and nominated as first holder of this post, Hardwin von Winnigen. The castle remained in the possession of the electorate of Mainz for three hundred years. But the sad story of the twelve heroic Templars is remembered in the neighborhood of Lanek to this day. And that is the story of the Templars of Lanek. 
The crusaders that returned home, rich beyond everyone's wildest dreams, and then were turned on by the church. The story of how twelve of them tried to hold on to their last keep. This is Dan Scholes with the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you'd like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you're enjoying the podcast, please head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen and leave a rating and review. And don't forget that if you'd like to help support the podcast, you can always head over to folktaleproject.com support or you can buy the podcast a coffee or become a Patreon patron. As always, thank you so much for listening.